Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we try to determine the best whiskey under $50 using the Whiskey Raiders list. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Tim Swyatt, Ryan Thompson, and Lenny Eckstein. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, guys. What's up, everybody? Hello. So... We're going to have a fun show today. We're going to do a little bracket challenge using a list from the Whiskey Raiders. But before we get to that, McNew said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that, McNew? Okay, so what is something, as you've gotten older, you've discovered is like a little luxury, but affordable, and you can do it, that you've been missing out on your whole life? Like, what did you find, like, maybe in your 30s or later, where you're like, okay. why have I not been doing this sooner? Yeah. Yeah, I got one. I got one. I'll, I'll kick us off here okay. because I've got a great quote that goes uh, that that uh, goes with this. Everybody, keep in mind that a luxury once enjoyed becomes a necessity. Oh, oh I like that. Okay, I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Isn't that uh, some truth behind that one? Mm-hmm. But I would say, uh, sitting in the uh, seat that in the aisle that has a little extra leg room in the airplane. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't treat myself to that. I'm not a first class guy, but uh, certainly if the uh, I love uh, an extra row seat or maybe a little extra leg room if nothing else. Yeah, so sure, uh, that's a nice little treat for myself uh, that that's I wasn't perfect. given uh, in 20s and early 30s. So okay, yeah, you know. okay. Well, I will say I got one too. This is uh, something I didn't do until the last uh, couple of years, and uh, go on trips and that have stay at a resort, uh, the spa. The spa is nice, man. Yeah, oh, go yeah. to the, go to the spa. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Just... Could get a body rub. And oh yeah, that. body various body <laughs> parts rubbed. Uh, the whole thing. Yeah, uh, just grease yeah. things bleached. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. appropriate now. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, are you, are you uh, getting your nails done? Which one is it? No, 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 no nails. And then uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm but, getting uh, it's, it's just nice. nice. So- I enjoy that. It's nice. I yeah. don't go to the one that Tim likes, though. The 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 well, at least his buddies. I think they're going to talk Tim into going. Uh, but Tim's got uh, some buddies who enjoy very specific spa services. That to me would be a uh, that would be a, a hard no. So yeah. <laughs> Say that now, Steve. But it, it does. I'm sure it'll come through in age. You'll you'll learn to appreciate. I, maybe I don't know. I, hope I have no idea. I still can't believe it. All right. Yeah. So well, that I haven't partaken in this, uh, but uh, there is a whole new. Um, counter, I don't know what it is. I don't even want to call this a uh, new spa procedure being done in a lot of these old retirement communities uh, that uh, these uh, fine masseuses are coming in and they're offering a milking of the prostate. <laughs> <laughs> is that so, Tim? 300 bucks. 300 bucks for the service. <laughs> it just sounds wow. terrible. How, this, how, how much do you tip for that? I'm curious. I don't know. I, well, I just hope it's not on it so many levels. Yeah. It's, yeah. This is going downhill quick tonight. Yeah, yeah. I, it's a whole spa service that I didn't know was on the brochure. Okay. Again, this luxury. is apparently a thing. <laughs> so is that the your prostate. luxury item? That- uh, that's Tim's luxury No, trend. no, no, that. I, no that, not, not mine. I, I, my luxury oh. item is more towards rockets. 
Well, then Steve brought up the spa services. I knew he was going this route. Yes, yes. So I didn't have to call and confirm the pricing. Uh, and uh, yes, this is something that is actually going on that's being put on websites and publicly talked about now in certain areas of the country and working its way, I'm sure, to the Midwest soon. It's well, already it here. It's way up to the mountains. I feel like I Chicago think. I haven't heard much conversation of it up here. <laughs> Tim's uh, literally says that uh, his buddies that uh, do this, they tell their wives and everything. It's like a whole thing. They're like, oh, and they're like, oh, I'm doing that. That's good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, as long as I don't have to be involved, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's so, I guess when you start getting towards retirement and you start, you're, you're already past retirement, oh, because these folks that I'm talking to are already well past retirement age. They just, yeah. they're just in a business that doesn't, they don't need to retire. And at some point in time, you got to fill the need. And if it doesn't involve, um, uh, uh, other sources, <laughs> massage culture that has been uh, out there, and this is something that uh, I think some of the spouses can uh, tolerate. It's, uh, I don't know if retirement has anything to do with it, but I think it's uh, when you don't give a fuck anymore, right? I guess. I think it's really I it's it's a where people Lenny's like, been oddly quiet talk, during this sorry. segment here. All of a sudden, <laughs> no, I think <laughs> Lenny might be one of the guys who gets this done because he's been awfully quiet. Or not. <laughs> he's like, oh, don't call me. Please don't call me right now. <laughs> don't out me. Yeah. Well, Lenny, so, pull us out of the ditch, would you? Yeah, yeah. I, I can do that. Uh, so I've got a couple. I, I feel like a lot of these, be it us or anyone, would be related to travel, and mine are. Um, so I've got two. Uh, one is a little, maybe it's a little weird. I've discovered it recently. Uh, so after probably the eighth piece, piece of luggage I've acquired uh, this year, I've realized that I have no tolerance for not having the right bag for the right trip. Okay. So uh, and that's fine. Just no, I'm not talking designer. I just mean like it's got to be the right size. Yes. Wheels, no yeah. wheels, backpack straps, no yeah. backpack straps. Optional. Possibly You're not talking Louis Vuitton versus Chanel bag? For sure not then. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> like, I mean, probably excessively technical in some ways, but uh, maybe sometimes extra colorful. Whatever. Like I got all kinds of bags. And I've, it's a little silly, but I, I just don't have the time to not have the appropriate bag for travel. Uh, another one, one. travel-related. Um so uh, I've been doing this annual motorcycle trip with a bunch of friends. Uh, this will be like my fourth or fifth year. We're actually planning it now. And uh, the first year, I, I, I found it odd that, uh, you know, for all of us, every single person wanted their own hotel room. I felt like that was a little wasteful. And uh, But after a few years, I kind of came to I was like, you know what? I, well, I don't want this dude in my room. Right, right. Yes. That is a good point. That, that is a good point because you only see it, yes. you know, as, as a younger person, you're like, you know what? All I'm going to do is sleep in this room. I, I, you know, why? Why would I go through that? And then when you get older, you're like, "Fuck this! I don't want another person in my room. I just want to sleep." What if they snore? There's all kinds of things. Right, there, yeah. yeah I, from what I just about. learned from Tim and Tim and his friends, I certainly don't want them in my room. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, you have two dudes well, milking each other's prostates. Yeah. You know what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, like related to that, and this is more of a flashback. Uh, Ryan, we we're actually in Vail. Amy and I, um, you know, like I, I don't remember the exact trip, but we were some friends, and we found ourselves sleeping on the floor of someone's house that we didn't even know. It was a friend of a friend with our friends, and we were probably <laughs> thirty, and yeah, we right. kind of turned to each other and talked about it and said, "We're never doing this again. We're too old for this right. shit." Yeah, yeah. There you well, go. Keep in mind, I got a guest room at the house here whenever you need, whenever you're passing through. So, thank you. There you go. That's there you go. There yeah. you go. That's a good offer. Vale. Yeah. A room in Vale's big. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. that, that's not a cheap place. So, yeah. <laughs> Tim, did, well, you, well, did you have quick, one beside? Oh. Oh, sorry, Akeley. Uh, I, Tim never really wait on anything unless he, he is officially admitting he gets the prostate. Uh, no, no, the the uh, the general would not approve, um, and and she won't also research how to do it herself. So that's a whole other discussion. Uh, no, I, I still go along with travel, and, and you know the this is this is probably already the old man complex starting to kick out here. Uh, but uh, I hate paying full price for anything. I always had to. You always been smart or savvy enough to use points or right. use coupons or travel coupon codes, something like that. So I do what I can. It's it's almost like a game, like I, I make sure if we're going on a vacation or taking trips or something like that. Either I'm getting a ton of stuff for it, or yeah. I'm not paying a darn thing for it because I'm paying forward for whatever credit card I'm putting it on, and then paying right. this out or the other. But I just just being more savvy of not separating dollars from my hands when I don't need to, and um, and and what goes along with that is is 
you, you got to tip the wait staff. You got to tip the, you, you don't be, I've, I've learned not to be 20 percent the, the new 10 percent of what it was. Uh, but you'd be surprised with another 5% or do if you can do that. Or when you're checking in to a hotel, uh, I always, depending on the, I've got a range of what I do. I always tip the front desk person uh, right off the bat from check-in because they never get any love. And I'd be, you'd be, not that I'm looking for something, but I do end up getting upgrades or get better really? rooms or, or, or better parts of the hotel that are more quiet because they know where they're putting the rooms at. Uh, and I've learned not to be, um, not to look away from that janitorial staff, the housekeeping staff or anything like that. And you'd be surprised what, what better experiences you can find when you're treating people nice like that. Well, drop drop uh, us so a little tip. How that's... much say you got a, say you got a $250 hotel room. How much you tip the front desk staff when you walk in? Ways and means. I'm sorry. Yes, now, now that I have some ways and means, uh, those are the things that I'm looking at doing that, that are, I consider, I guess it's a luxury thing that I, that I turn around into, um, you know, benefits oh. for myself. He just asked you how much you tip the front desk though. What's the, What's the yeah, so the, the front desk, sorry about that. So, um, yeah, my internet went unstable. Uh, so anywhere, if it's a um, standard like Hampton Inn or Fairfield Inn or something like that, it'll be five to ten dollars. If it's a full right. service location, I'll, I'll put a 20 in there in between Whoa. the license and the credit card. Whoa, uh, and then, uh, you know, with me, the, I you give the tip. nod to is the, the nod. <laughs> no, not at all. What I normally get is, uh, well, what I, what I normally well, I'll get the weight. No. What I normally get is, oh, do you need change? I said, no, that's for you <laughs> because you guys don't get any love across the board. And really? I want to start, I want to start my trip out nice yeah. uh, and uh, and leave it at that. Yeah. Hey, Jesse, like, I like it. Yeah. You know, and they, it quickly goes into their pocket. They look around because they don't want to share with anybody. And next thing you know, the finger does, fingers start typing. Uh, so 10 to $20 so. can get you a lot then. That's what I'm hearing. Good. Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> apparently, so can 300. McNew. Yeah, 300, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, McNew, uh, what do you you asked the question? What's your luxury? This okay, should be so interesting. I discovered this while Christmas shopping because when I buy people gifts, I buy myself gifts. It's it's just how it works. So I discovered like silk pajamas, <laughs> and I'm not a pajama girl. Like I've always been like, you know what, t-shirt, underwear, fine. I'm not a pajama girl unless I'm staying at somebody's house. But <laughs> so nice. They're so nice. It's like it just it feels like you're not being a bum when you're <laughs> being a bum. So get the silk uh, hat and pajamas. It's <laughs> like a nice bum. I don't even know why it's funny, but it is. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I, don't, I, I, I found them and I, I'm obsessed. I'm, ne I'm never going back. It's, it's like never an going obsessed. back. It's like, oh my God, it's crossing my bottoms right now. <laughs> it, it just feels like. <laughs> All right. Well, you gotta be comfy. Note, it's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with the prostate milker, Tim. <laughs> oh, that's now going to become my thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can send all uh, all of your uh, complaints to uh, ABB Network. Admin at ABB Network. Uh, so I'm drinking a uh, ABB. I want to read them. <laughs> Uh, I'm drinking a Katakin Creek uh, rye whiskey ABV uh, barrel shop pick. This is the one finished in that ex bourbon and maple syrup barrel. Okay, fantastic. Okay, not, not much there. Not much there. Haven't you heard something? I heard something there, Let's but it start wasn't there. much. Yeah, okay, yes, we heard something. There. Okay, I'll go next. I've got the MB Roland here. MB Roland. So, all right, here we go. Uh, wow. A lot of squeak, a lot of squeak. Pop was decent, uh, enough to take the lead, clearly. It had some longevity to it yeah. between the oh, yeah. squeak and the pop. Yeah. The squeak and the pop, yeah. All right, next up is Ryan. Well, I just, uh, I fold already because I'm kind of excited about this bottle I'm going to present tonight because I went to a Heaven Hill dinner pairing uh, here in our valley about uh, two weeks ago, and uh, they brought out some old mellow corn, so... Oh. Nice. I'm uh, going to just go with a little milk corn and there's no cork because it's a twist off and I'm proud of it. Twist off. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Uh, McNew. Um, so I have this one that apparently no one else has heard of either. It's a single bar barrel giant and Dave Pickerel was the master distiller on this. And I just okay. happened oh, to yeah. run across it on the shelf tonight. So saw his name, had to get it. Okay, yeah, that's the lead. That was good. Sound like a champagne cork. Uh, that, was, that was impressive. All right, Lenny, you're last. What do you got, man? Well, I was weighing out the field, and uh, I was going to, I don't know. I don't feel like I can have a, anything that will beat McNews. Uh, I'm going with a well-loved bottle of um, Wilderness Trail, six-year. 
Okay. There you go. <laughs> Okay, uh, good effort, good effort, Lenny, but uh, not quite enough. McNew had a had a cannon there, so she wins. So cheers, cheers gang. Cheers. All right, we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, it's going to be time for the best bourbon under fifty dollars. We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon, as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We'll also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop. It's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows, and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Well, go ahead, Danny. Is there something you need to say? Just sitting there saying that uh, plain and simple... Uh, if you're sending it me to a text, you need to tell me you need to send it to me on a text. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we have a bracket challenge to find the best bourbon under fifty dollars. Yes, we do. So, uh, again, this is not our list. We're utilizing a list that has been published by the Whiskey Raiders. Uh, it's a website, and they. Uh, they put out their own articles and stuff like that. And it, like many of these lists of bourbons under $50, it includes rye and wheat whiskey. So, um, uh, but again, we're not we're not creating the rules. We're just uh, uh, doing what they presented to see if we can figure the best. All right. The list that they have is as follows. This is not the order. We'll talk about the order in just a second here. So they got Green River, Maker's Mark 46, Bernheim Wheat Whiskey, Wild Turkey 101 Rye, Four Roses Single Barrel, Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, Rittenhouse Rye, and Knob Creek Small Batch Nine Year. All right, it's going to uh, pair up like this. Rittenhouse Rye will be taking on Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. Then we've got that Bernheim Wheat Whiskey taking on Green River. Then we've got Four Roses Small Batch, or is that Single Barrel? What is I mean, Single Barrel? Single Barrel. Single Barrel. Single barrel. I just put down SB, and uh, yeah, uh, that wasn't enough there on my on my writing. All right, then it's not Knob Creek Nine Year, Wild Turkey One Hundred One Rye, and Maker's Mark Forty Six. All right. Round number one, Rittenhouse Rye versus Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. Up first is Tim. 
two Heaven Hill products going after each other. I'm with Evan Williams, Bottled and Bond, hands down. No All right. Next. All right. Lenny, uh, you're next. Uh, yeah. Evan Williams, Bottled and Bond or Rittenhouse Rye? You know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's To some extent, it's a toss-up, but I was just at a Christmas party, and somebody plopped down a bottle of Rittenhouse Rye, uh, and I like that stuff, so I'm going to go with that for this one. All right. Ryan, you're up next. Rittenhouse Rye or Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond? Tough one out of the gate here, Akeley. I'm a fan of both. Yeah. I guess if I had to choose if both of them were in front of me, I'd probably reach for the Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond first. All right. That means they are up two to one. McDew, what do you think? Rittenhouse Rye or Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond? I think that Bottled and Bond is just stellar for its price and it's just good. It's good bourbon. Like you can drink it neat. You can throw it in a cocktail. I'm going Evan Williams, Bottled and Bond. All right. All right. Next up is Bernheim Wheat Whiskey taking on Green River Bourbon. Round number two, Lenny, you're first. I mean, similar answer. Uh, I I'm a fan of the Bernheim wheat, and I, I like the uh, – it's got a more, slightly more unique flavor profile. I don't go to that every day. So if presented with a two, that's what I'm grabbing. Okay. All right. Ryan, you're next. Bernheim yeah, interesting, interesting pairing. But uh, I do like a Bernheim on occasion, but I got to lean towards a little Green River. Green River. Green River has tied it up. McNew, you're next. Green River or Bernheim wheat? This is going to come to a shock to everyone because I'm a big wheat fan, but I did not like Bernheim. I thought it was too sweet, like it's too icky for like icky sweet. So Ooh. I'm going to go Green River. Green River. That means Green River goes up two to one um, over Bernheim wheat. And I'm going to close this thing out. I'm going to do a favor to the Whiskey Raiders and not have Bernheim wheat be in the mix for the best <laughs> bourbon under $50. So uh, Green River. to go there moves on and i do like green river by the way this is a great product and uh, a great price for sure bottles cool too all right next up is four roses single barrel versus knob creek nine-year-old round number three ryan you're first i like to be first on this one because these are two of my favorites uh so um i'm digging both of them but uh that four roses single barrel i seem to be buying that one a couple times a year when i see it on the shelf and so uh, I got to give a nod to old Four Roses single, single Barrel. Four Roses Single Barrel goes up one nothing. McNew, what do you think? Four Roses Single Barrel or Knob Creek Nine Year? That Knob Creek Nine Year is going to get my attention every time. Knob Creek Nine Year ties it up. Uh, this is for just the regular shelfy versions of these two. Again, we're not talking barrel picks or anything. So uh, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I think I bought more. Four Roses single barrel, so I'll go that. I'll go Four Roses single barrel. That's up two to one. Tim, what do you think? Four Roses single barrel or Knob Creek nine? Uh, this one, yeah, this one's tough. Um, I'm gonna go Knob Creek. I'm gonna keep this thing rolling because I think okay. this is our, this is our final. No, to be honest with you, these two are. <laughs> are that's, a, that's a tough matchup for sure. So yeah, here's it's a where tough we're matchup. at. Yeah. Here's where we're at, Lenny. It is all tied up. Four Roses Single Barrel or Knob Creek Nine Year. You are the deciding vote. So I order and consume a lot of Knob Creek Nine Year because I feel like it's on a lot of bars that don't have a better selection otherwise. But presented with the choice, I'm going with that Four Roses Single Barrel pretty much Ooh. everywhere. Four Roses Single nice Barrel. I didn't think that's what he was doing. He, he, he tricked me. It was curveball. He tricked me. I started writing down the other one. So, all right. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, round number four, Wild Turkey 101 Rye or Makers 46. Round number four, McNew, you're first. I do truly like both of these, but I think Makers 46 is just like a nicer sip sipping whiskey. Okay. Okay. Uh, Wild Turkey 101 Rye is one of my favorite items to order at bars because it's uh, just rare enough. I, I mean, it's hard to find in St. Louis. Uh, you know, 101, regular 101, no problem. It's everywhere. 101 Rye, a little bit tougher. And a lot of times, you'll if you find the rye, it'll be in the 81 proof, which I don't like that. I like the 101. That being said, I got to I gotta hold their feet to the fire here and say the best bourbon. I, I can't give a pass here. Uh, I, I, I'm, despite the fact that I like the wild Turkey one-on-one rye better, it's hard for me to say that is the best bourbon. So with that in mind, I'm going makers 46, meaning it is up quickly up to nothing. Tim, what do you think? Steve, I'm uh, with you to close this up. Makers 46 hands down. 
Makers 46. Okay. Here's what our final four now looks like. Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond will take on Green River. Then you got Four Roses, Single Barrel, uh, taking on Makers Mark 46. Round number five. I go first. Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond versus Green River. Okay. This is kind of our uh, old trusty friend in Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond versus Green River, kind of a new up and comer. And I got to say, I think if you presented both to me and said, "Here, have a have a pour of this," I think I would grab the Green River now. So that's got to that's got to be the one, well, the one that gets my vote. Then I, I think Evan Williams is a great bourbon at a great price, but the Green River, there's something cool going on about it. So that's getting my vote. So Green River goes up one nothing. Tim, what do you think? Uh, Steve, I'm with you. I got to give a little shout out to the craft folks here. If I'm looking at it, if I'm getting an option between a uh, flagship product versus a craft. Uh, knowing what they're doing down at Green River, I'm going to give them a shot over the Evan Williams. Um, okay. So I'm going to go Green River. Green River. Lenny, you're next. Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond, or Green River? I think uh, maybe just as a an effect of having consumed so much Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond, and loving it. But again, like I guess I'm using a weird, uh, you know, vector of sorts where it's like, what am I going to grab if it's in front of me? I think it's going to be the Green River on Green this River. day. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good, solid, rational way to do it. Green River moves on. It will be in our finale. All right, next up is Four Roses Single Barrel versus Makers 46. Tim, you are first this round. Uh, man, I have a hard time falling away from Makers uh, from the bourbon there, especially with a little twist on the Oak Stay finishing. Uh, I'm going to go with Makers 46 on that one. I would choose that over the Four Roses. Makers 46 goes up one nothing. Lenny, what do you think? Four Roses Single Barrel or Makers 46? God, I am uh, I'm a sucker for all things, you know, toasted. I think uh -huh. uh, I'd like to see every bourbon be toasted, I guess. Um, but uh, I know some people don't feel that way. I think, though, I would go for the Four Roses just the same, though. I'm a, I, you know, I really love their single barrel expressions. So Four Roses. Have you ever done a toasted product? Every what? single barrel we do is toasted. It's it. I, I find that oh, God. I uh, so kick me off my soapbox at any point. But okay, uh, ahead, I. Ahead, I think that uh, I'm, from day one, uh, from the first barrel I laid down in 2011, we were doing heavy toast number two char on all our barrels. Yeah. We've done a few experiments of a few without, but we've never done the secondary where, you know, like big brands like Makers has a ton of barrels with their standard profile and the toasted oak is a way to infuse it on secondary. I really, I'm a fan of it in the primary. So, you know, toasted and uh, light char. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Good. So, All right. We're at one, one round number six, McNew, you're next four roses, single barrel or maker's mark. We're again, we're tied at one, one. I think, you know, single bar barrels can vary. So makers 46 has always been consistent. I'm going to go makers 46 makers 46. Um, I'm going to split it and I'm going to go four roses, single barrel, which, which means we've wow. really, uh, gonna turn this over to Tim. He's in a role of power here because he's gonna vault one into the finale. Um, Aikley, I think you mean Ryan. Uh, Ryan. Ryan's a tiebreaker. Huh? huh? Well, I'm looking at my the wrong, shoulders, buddy. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing here. <laughs> we got gotcha. you. <laughs> okay, Ryan, you're next. Sorry. This is a heavyweight battle. This is Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield, if you will. Yeah, We're all of that age where we remember those battles, right? Right. And uh, so it's hard to, uh, you know, you got two heavyweights going head to head, but I gave a nod to uh, Four Roses in the first round. I got to keep nodding their direction and give it to Four Roses. Four Roses. Okay. Four Roses, single barrel, moves to the finale. Uh, they will be taking on Green River. Round number seven. Here we go. This is it. Lenny, you're first. Green River, Four Roses, single barrel. I feel like this is sort of a slam dunk for Four Roses, single barrel. Uh, no offense to Green River. Okay. Okay. Slam dunk time, he says. Ryan, what do you think? Green Rivers uh, or Four Roses? You know, I'm going three for three. I wish I had a little more uh, context behind it, but at this point, everyone knows uh, my opinion on Four Roses. Uh, I do want to give a nod to Tim's comments to Green River and all the craft guys. Certainly, Lena and I appreciate that, so thank you, Tim. But uh, I got to go stay. I got to stay with the tried and true Four Roses single pair. Okay. Okay. Here's where we're at. Four Roses Single Barrel is up 2 nothing. McNew, it's going to be your vote. You can end this thing right here, right now, or you can give Green River life in this game. What's your decision? 
I'm going to absolutely give Green River some love here. Green River. Green River ha now has life. They are down two to one. Backs against the wall. One vote cast against them, and they are out of this thing. But they're not going to get it here. Green River is going to have life as they try to become the number one bourbon under $50 uh, against Four Roses, a big-time contender here in round number seven. It gets turned over to Tim. Tim. I jumped ahead last round, and I uh, was going to give that to you. You do have to legitimately do this. One. Hey, I'm to legit I have to have some real thought behind this. So uh, Ryan brought up a good point about the Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson fight in the last round. And if I'm looking at Green River and the folks down there versus Four Roses and Brent Elliott, uh, Brent's going to be biting an ear off here. Yeah. He's going to be the one biting the ear off on, on the champ. Um, I have a hard time going away from four rows of single barrel on this one. As much as I want to get Green River apparel sent to my house, you can find me on Instagram later when we talk about that. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, four rows of single barrel in the final uh, and the final vote there and make that one the top bourbon. There you go. That's number one bourbon under $50. Uh, you're welcome, Whiskey Raiders. We have done uh, a great job for you in presenting your list and what should be number one uh if any of us actually read through the full article we would know what they selected but uh i f don't remember myself at all i'm sorry i forgot uh all right we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us tim we're going to start with you where can people find you you can find me on instagram at swyguy2112 all right lenny you can find myself and the rest of deer hammer on social media at deer hammer on the web at deerhammer.com you can also Buy all of our whiskey online currently at DeerHammer.com. Soon to be some other cool spots. And you can come visit us in beautiful Buena Vista, Colorado. All right, Ryan. Catch us across all socials at 10th MTN Whiskey. Our website's 10thWhiskey.com. That's 10th Whiskey with an E. All right, McNew. I'm on Instagram at McNew ABB. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. The important website, though, is abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. 3,000-plus shows, so much more, abvnetwork.com. And please, come by and see us, the ABV Barrel Shop. Uh, I don't know that any of these products are there, but when we can get them in a single barrel, they absolutely will be. So uh, please check us out, Arnold, Missouri, St. Louis suburb, or check us on the web at abvbarrelshop.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Hey, hey guys. Nice. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary, 
or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with the national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.